My name is John Vandermeer. I teach ecology at the University of Michigan. Some of you know that already. Um, it's my job to welcome you here to the, the Michigan meeting on food, on food sovereignty. This is the second Michigan meeting of the year. Um, uh, let me begin by thanking our funder, and that is the Rackham School of Graduate Studies, who funds two of these things per year. And we were lucky enough to get funding for the, the second one this year. Um, let me also thank the committee involved in organizing the, midi, the, the meeting. Basically, these are members of the Sustainable Food Systems Initiative of the University of Michigan. And um, um, should I read all their names? I don't want to read all their names. There's too many of them, okay? So um, those of you in the Sustainable Food Systems Initiative at the University of Michigan, thank you so much for organizing this for us. Um, thanks also to Jane Steppe and the Steppe Solutions for their ex expert administrative work, which is still ongoing. I'm uh, particularly uh, moved by last weekend. Last weekend was a fresh riff for Richard Levins. Richard Levins is an icon of the ecological movement and the, and the <coughs> sort of progressive movement in the United States from Harvard University. Ten years after the fall of the Ber Berlin Wall, um, he's a professor of public health at Harvard, and he's, like I said, he's an icon of, the, of ecology. He wrote an article uh, entitled, Rearming the Revolution, the Tasks of Theory for Hard Times. Let me read a short quote from there, okay? <laughs> Let me read a short quote from there. Quote, in agriculture, we, that is the those of the progressive community. In agriculture, we criticize the view that sees progress as occurring along a single pathway from small-scale petty production to large-scale agribusiness, from subordination to nature to control over nature, and from tra traditional superstition to modern science. We recognize this developmental pathway as driven by class struggle and the con conversion of knowledge unevenly into commodities. We counterpose an ecologically and socially rational pathway that goes beyond brute force capital intensity to knowledge intensive low input practices beyond the apparent efficiencies of monoculture to plan diversity in which the agricultural enterprise is a planned mosaic of fields in which each has its own product but also contributes to the productivity of the others. We invent ways to reduce rather than increase input with the methods of biofertilizers, nitrogen fixing microorganisms, mineral mobilizing fungi, recycling of litter with the help of invertebrates, and natural pest management aimed at systems that are as self operating as possible. We see both peasant and scientific knowledge as contributing to the design of these systems. Cuba has adopted this pathway of development partly out of conviction and partly from necessity of their special period, so that the commitment is very real and powerful, but not yet consolidated. Finally, we note that such a program is contrary to the capitalist need for technologies that require more, not less, investment per hectare. And then he goes on later on in the article, <clears throat> some people analyze the production system as an ecosystem, others look at the structure of injustice, and still others examine the demography of rural and urban areas. These are not different opinions about the same thing, but rather different agendas. <clears throat> they are all clearly legitimate for their own purposes, yet incomplete with respect to understanding the whole. The next step then is to weave them together to show how they are partial, relatively true perspectives on a greater whole, and to examine how class structure or land tenure affect the technology of production, which in turn alters the ecology, etc. In the traditional use of the story about blind men and an elephant, they each describe the elephant from their partial perspectives. The story is used to conclude frequently that each one has his own reality, but another interpretation is possible. There really are elephants, and the men should talk to each other. If the story were retold as four blind women, they would probably put together by communicating a more comprehensive view of elephants. <laughs> <coughs> So at, the, at approximately the same time that Levins was writing those words, the peasant farmers organization La Via Campesina coined the term food sovereignty. After a lengthy debate of how to incorporate the various ideas and agendas of their extremely broad-based membership into a single identifier, anticipating Levins's call to weave together distinct progressive takes on the food and agriculture system. With this advancement in theory, <coughs> we in the academy face an unusual situation. 
Unlike previous grand theoretical framings where important intellectuals analyzed the salient problems of the world and devised enlightenments and mini enlightenments, this grand theoretical framing comes from the subaltern, from the least powerful of the system of social class divisions. The world intellectual class, at least a part of it, has recognized this framing and has engaged in appropriate theorizing and analyzing, attempting to shed light not only on the food and agricultural system, but on the process whereby this remarkable <laughs> reversal of class domination seems to have occurred. It is within this political and historical framework that we have invited some of the world's intellectual leaders on the subject of food sovereignty to come together at this Michigan meeting. With such a gathering, we hope to continue the tradition of Michigan offering intellectual support to progressive political movements from the first teach-in <clears throat> on the war in Vietnam, which was held here in Ann Arbor 50 years ago, to the Port Huron Statement, to the first Earth Day, this Michigan meeting will pave the way to, will <laughs> pave the way to, well, I guess that's what the meeting is about, so you'll fill in the blank afterwards, okay? So that's pretty much what it's about, and we'll now proceed <laughs> to the first panel. Uh, and am I supposed to introduce you? This is Yvette Perfecto, who's going to moderate the first panel.